Hey everyone, welcome to the Lesbian Review Podcast. I'm Tara, and today I'm taking over for Sheena so that I can interview Sheena for a very special Halloween episode. Welcome, Sheena, to your very own show. (laughs) So good to be here, Tara. (laughs) We were chatting, and we thought Halloween's coming. There's some amazing uh, spooky reads out there, but it turns out that I've read almost none of them, and you actually love to read them. So we thought it might make sense to just flip the tables on your show a little bit. And now I'm interviewing you. Yeah, I think it's kind of fun. And you are a reviewer at the Lesbian Review, so this makes sense. So, Halloween, spooky reads. What were your criteria when you were choosing books for this episode? I had to have moments in the read where I was genuinely afraid of what was going to happen for the character. It tends towards supernatural, all of these, or whatever a zombie is. Probably still supernatural. Yeah. Gross? They're gross. Ghosts and zombies. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And well-written and exciting. And these tend to also have a slight romance element to them. That wasn't the criteria for me, but it did make it exciting. But these are still different than paranormal romance, right? Like, would you say that these are different versus, say, like, vampire romances or shifter romances? Yes. Very different. Because supernatural will tend to have spooky elements, scary moments, whereas the vampire and sort of werewolf type books generally don't. They have more action or adventure type scenarios and they really are romance novels at their heart i'm thinking if you say like the latest jenny frame the hunger for you yeah but there was nothing scary about that book right yeah yeah that's why i'm that's why i'm saying the difference between like paranormal romances and the and the books that you're talking about today is that if you look at like that or the garul books or like those are really romances. So we're not delivering a list of paranormal romances. And if you like those, you can go find them on the Lesbian Review. But these are for like the true horror lovers out there who have been waiting for their list. Yes, absolutely. And I have five of them today that I want to share with you. And it's cheating just a little because three of them are from Jerry Hill. But mm, she just does them so well. So a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. So what's your first book? My number one pick is Dark Dreamer by Jennifer Fulton. Now, if you haven't read her, you absolutely must. She also writes under the pseudonym of Rose Beecham. And she writes um, cop procedural books under that name, mystery type things. And she just tells a magnificent tale. So I'm going to read the synopsis I wrote when I wrote the review. The story is about Rode Devlin, a best-selling horror writer who is suffering from a severe case of writer's block after two failed novels. Looking for a fresh start and perhaps even some inspiration, she buys an old Victorian house in Maine called Dark Harbor Cottage. Devlin gets a little more inspiration than she was hoping for when she discovers that her new home is haunted by a rather nasty ghost. To make matters more complicated, she discovers that her neighbors are identical twins, Phoebe and Cora Temple, and they are both deeply alluring. Rose struggles to decide who she finds more attractive. And let's just say they both find her rather attractive back. Together, she and Phoebe try to find out why her house is haunted in an effort to put the ghost to rest. And while this is going on, the Temple Twins are drawn into an FBI investigation of a possible serial killer. Having to face life-changing choices, the sisters are pulled in different directions, with the possibility of losing their only real family that they have left one another. So you have the ghost element and the mystery around the ghost. You have a love triangle in the form of two gorgeous, identical, and yet personality-wise very different twins with this writer. And you have an FBI case for a serial killer. I don't think I could love this book more if I tried. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What What was your favorite, like really favorite element of it? The complexity of the story. I like stories that are complex, but easy to follow. This is such a difficult thing to get right because you have to weave all these different story threads in such a way that my Swiss cheese brain (laughs) follows along. And Fulton is a master at this. In terms of like the, the spooky or the scary stuff, what really did it for you there? Oh, there's some really spooky ghost stuff that goes on in this book. 
I don't want to spoil it because there's a whole mystery around who the ghost is, but there were definitely moments that the hairs on the back of my neck were prickling. All right. As I am the biggest weenie at the Lesbian Review, I don't want to read that book. That sounds terrifying. No, thank you. <laughs> Please enjoy the. Hey, but the love triangle tarot would suck you right in, I'm telling you. Maybe I could just read that part and skim the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Jennifer Fulton. I think that's the funny part about this podcast is it's going to be you talking about all these books that are going to sound amazing to so many people and me just going, no, no, no. I'm hoping that by the end of this podcast, you would have considered at least just one of them. Okay. Well, I mean, the the love triangle thing I'm curious about. Oh, and it's done so well because you can't decide either who you want the couple to be. It's delightful. As long as it doesn't turn into some like creepy thruple thing, then no, it doesn't. Okay. No, no, it has it has a resolution that made me very happy. Okay, what is the next book on your list? So my number two book is Valley of the Dead by Crystal M. Romero. Now I pull out this book recommendation whenever anybody wants a horror because this is my go-to zombie apocalypse lesbian novel. I just love it. All right. And you might actually enjoy this one because it's not super horror. I think there's like maybe two scenes that are a little bit scary, but they're not like super, super scary. But mostly it's a survival type of book. Valley of the Dead by Crystal M. Romero is sometimes hilarious, sometimes scary, sometimes romantic, but always utterly charming. And what makes it even better is that it has a lesbian leading lady. And even better than that is it has a butch, black, older lesbian leading lady. The novel starts on Gay Pride Weekend to the backdrop of much celebration since the US was finally celebrating equality. In Silicon Valley, Yvonne had just dumped her long-time cheating girlfriend and was feeling free at last. That is until she gets a frantic phone call from her very gay best friend Reggie. He and a bunch of drag queens are stuck in his apartment and need rescuing from the zombie apocalypse that's taken hold of the city. She jumps in her monster of a vehicle puts on her no-nonsense butch approach to the apocalypse, and ends up picking up a group of survivors along her route out of town. Eventually, the survivors include Reggie and the drag queens, a young couple and two police officers. One of the officers is Captain Jacqueline Rhodes, a competent, gorgeous woman who leaves Yvonne thinking about more than just survival. Together, the survivors must overcome a number of challenges, the least of which is getting out of town, and find some way safe to settle down. And I really liked the way Romero concluded this book. Like, what actually happened to them in the end? I thought it was kind of smart. We are recording this podcast the day after Calgary Pride. So I'm kind of entirely digging this premise. (laughs) I'm just imagining all the drag queens that I saw yesterday walking by, getting the hell out of town. It's hilarious. He's such a, like, screaming queen. And she's the butch that comes to the rescue. It's just, it's so cute. So who would you particularly recommend this to like is this good for somebody who just wants to dip their toe into horror this is if you like zombie apocalypse getting out of the way of the zombies figuring out how to survive books this is the one for you yeah like the movie what was that one was it called zombie land where it was like it was a zombie movie but it wasn't like a super scary like it was like a zombie light like i was okay with that or Shaun of the dead yeah but those were both comedies this is not a comedy this is more like a adventure that sort of vibe Okay, what's your next book? My next one is Haunting Love by K.A. Mole. This was a fun one because this was the only time Mole has ever stepped into the supernatural realm. And I kind of liked that she did. I liked the interesting way she did this one. It's the story of Gabe and Anna. Gabe is struggling to come to terms with her wife's death a few years prior. One of the reasons that she's struggling is that she can see or at least sense spirits, but she cannot sense her wife and she's not been able to process her loss. Anna is new in town, having recently taken a job working alongside Jaina, her friend from college and the main character in Mole's novel, Soulmates. Anna is renting a house from Gabe's father and is having rather disturbing electrical problems. Gabe comes over to see if she can fix the problem and discovers two things. Firstly, she's very attracted to Anna, and secondly, the house is haunted. Anna and Gabe have a less than pleasant encounter, thanks in part to Anna's fear of being attracted to women. Gabe is a handsome woman that stirs her blood and her fears. Will Gabe be able to overcome her sorrow enough to start a new relationship with Anna, 
and will Anna be able to work through her fear of being who she is enough to act on her attractions? And then there are the ghosts that need to be dealt with too. At one point I was terrified for the horse in this novel. What? Yes, there's a horse, and it was very scary. And that was my worst part in this novel. I actually messaged Mole and said to her, if you kill this horse in this novel, I'm not going to review this book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess that was a spoiler. Uh-huh. Anyway. The horse does not get killed. <laughs> so what did you love so much about this book? Mole has a, a way of writing butch characters that I adore. And I think it's because she herself identifies as a butch, so it's a real authentic kind of take on the character. And I love the supernatural elements. It was just, she just completely went way out of her usual style with this one in writing the supernatural stuff. Because of that, it was unpredictable, and I didn't know what she was going to do with the story. I also like her chemistry between her characters. Uh, so this is primarily a romance, this one. But the supernatural elements make it an exciting one. So what is your next book? Now we hit the Jerry Hill run. Jerry Hill. Okay, I'm ready. So my very next book is Keepers of the Cave by Jerry Hill, which of course you knew I was going to say because this one and Weeping Walls are a duo on my 10 favorite books like ever list. I didn't know because I haven't read these books because they sounded really scary. <laughs> oh, but the chemistry... And right. uh, yeah, okay, but they are scary. But they're not that, but they, yeah, you probably wouldn't like them. Okay, <laughs> so, so my review of Keepers of the Cave by Jerry Hill is as follows This book is simply brilliant. Hill should write more horror. That's it? That, no, I'm that's just not a synopsis. Okay, so what I actually did is I put the description from Amazon in here because it's, it's apt. The senator's daughter disappears and FBI agents C.J. Johnson and Paige Riley are assigned to the Backwater All-Girls School in East Texas, near where the senator's daughter was last seen. They figure that the assignment is a dead end, but strange things keep happening in the area, and something is lurking in Hoganfall. And boy, do they discover a whole lot of something. In the meantime, C.J. and Paige have this chemistry between them. And they had, right at the beginning of the book, I think it's explained that they had a one-night stand. Now they go undercover and they have to pretend to be a couple um, because it's an all-female school and there's some complicated thing that makes it acceptable for them to pretend to be a couple. So it's like one of these, like, pretending to be um, a couple and then actually falling madly in bed together. Oh, damn it. That was the way to get me interested. <laughs> There's a monster in this one, though, so I would, uh, and, and there are scary parts, definitely. But uh, the chemistry is there, and the, the snappy Jerry Hill writing. You know that those moments where you just can't help but laugh because it's just so beautiful and ridiculous and funny all at once? There are those moments in this book. Go read it. Go read it. And so the other one. Okay, so Weeping Walls, which is my 4B. Okay, so Keepers of the Cave is the first book, and Weeping Walls is the second book, and Jerry Hill never wrote the third book. That sounds like something she should do. Well, I asked her. She says these guys didn't sell at all as well as they need to in order for her to justify a third book in the series. All right, listeners, you know what to do. Absolutely, go buy these books. Both books can be read as standalone books, but I would read them in order just because then you follow the relationship of the main characters. So Keepers of the Cave is the first book. And while I love Keepers of the Cave, I think that Hill actually created an even better second book in Weeping Walls. The story is about an abandoned house in a small town in Houston. Here they find a dead body that's similar to a cold case from 14 years older. The four FBI agents are sent to investigate. And really strange things keep happening at this house. So why did you love this book even more? It's just a better book. I can't tell you without ruining book one. Book one, I found the conclusion to be a little bit, a little hard to believe, right? This one was much more realistic and much more scary from that point of view. So who would you especially recommend these books to? Other than everybody, because we need everybody to buy it so that Jerry Hill will write the next book. But if that was not a factor, who would you recommend these to? 
So the first book I would recommend to people who like creature and weird happenings and things like the hills have eyes type of movies. You know, you, you people get stranded in a weird place and like weird stuff happens, that kind of thing. It's not as gruesome as uh, The Hills of Eyes, just so you know, but it is kind of creepy. But the second book I would recommend more to people who like police procedurals with a touch of weird, a little bit of scary. Okay. Should I throw a bonus book on this podcast? Because you reminded me that I've read one. That would be appropriate. I got one more. You got one more? Yep. Oh, you weren't kidding. Wait. <gasps> oh, I see what you did, you sneaky woman, because you said you had five books. It's a series. And I was like... Well, and I was doing the math, and, like, I'm not very good at math. No, but that's why it was a 4A and a 4B. That's not how... See, this is not my number five. That's not how that no, works. This is how it is works. This... Totally... No, it is. It's how it works. This would. is a list of six. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Five. Terror five. Okay. No, you All know. right, what's your... The other one is... What... This is what... <laughs> what's your last book, you <laughs> sneaky woman? Paradox Valley by Jerry Hill. I really enjoyed this book, but I still... Like, if I had to rank it, it would be my least favorite of her horror books. So I still enjoyed it, but it's not as good as the previous two I've just done. But this one is so unique in the story that it just had to be on this list. A four-second blip on a radar at an army base and an earthquake that shakes the residents in Paradox Valley, causing all lights and batteries to go out as the army scrambling to find out what is going on. Was it an earthquake, a meteor, or something else entirely? After the Black Hawk helicopter disappears, Captain Corey Conaway is sent on a reconnaissance mission. Dana Ingram has returned to her parents' farm for a two-week vacation in Paradox Valley after running from a marriage proposal in Seattle. She's only there for a couple of days before a small earthquake leaves them without power. Cars won't start, batteries don't work, cell phones are useless. On her way to track down the helicopter, Corey comes across Dana and her cousin Butch and enlists their help on her mission. Together they all ride, on horses, towards the crash site of the helicopter and what they assume is the landing site of an unidentified blip on the screen. Unfortunately, when they get to their destination, whatever it is, have all of them running to survive. So, is this a romance? Sort of. There's, uh, there's chemistry between Corey and Dana. Yeah. I mean, it's Jerry Hill. There's romance. But this is definitely a creepy ass book. But so much fun. I know this one would have made Brooklyn's number one on this particular list. Because she just loves this. Like, beyond anything. What makes this one stand out to, like, put it on this list? I have never experienced a story like this before. That... With bad guys like this. I don't want to spoil it because it's so, like, you have to go on this journey. Yeah, okay. So who would you recommend this one to, other than Brooklyn, because she's already read it? If you like those books that are unexplained, like, you don't know what's coming, you don't know who the bad guys are, and things keep getting worse, like, mounting, right? This is the book for you. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm actually done now with my list. See? Um... I know, I'm trying to think of what to say about this, because, like, I'm intrigued. I, get, I'm, I am intrigued. Okay, so this one's scary level, I would put it at, like, a, a scare factor of, like, 8 out of 10. Oh, no thanks. Yeah, there, there are definitely moments in this that make me, like, all the, the hair on my arms rose, and I was just like, wow, this is one creepy-ass book. Okay, then I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to recommend it to people who are looking for creepy reads. Sounds good. All right. Um, so, yes, apparently I have read one horror book since I started reading with the lesbian review. So shall we tack it on as a bonus book? Sure. Okay. Would you classify this as horror, though? I mean, was it horror? It's, it's a mindfuck. That's for sure. Okay. All right. All right. Like it. It, yeah. it kind. It okay. kind of is. So it's Castle Wrath by Karen Callmaker, and it's actually it's an erotic horror rewrite of Northanger Abbey. 
So the synopsis that I wrote for this was, after learning that she's in the running to inherit a castle, Brittany Brannigan heads from her native California to the highlands of Scotland. All she has to do is last 30 nights in Castle Rath with the other heir, the gorgeous Portia Tenille, and one of them will get the castle and the other will walk away with 5,000 pounds. Sounds easy, except Brittany never counted on Scotland's famous bucketing reigns, getting sick, a surly yet attractive caretaker, possible vampires, and some seriously sexy nightmares. So those nightmares are, like, messed up, for sure, which I think is why it is a horror and does make it on the horror list. The thing that I loved about this book is that the whole thing is told through Brittany's eyes. It's like her diary, almost, of what she experiences when she's there. And she's, like, the perfect, unreliable narrator, Because she's experiencing these things that don't make sense. And we're getting it through her perspective. And she's not particularly smart. But she is quite sweet. And so it's seeing what she does with all these things. In terms of like the scary factor. It's probably like a two or three. But I can also see how Brittany was terrified. By what she was going through. So it's like reading the diary of somebody who's gone through something super messed up and it's a lot of fun and it's short so if you want to read something like really short it it is it is pretty sexy but it's not like this is not like a Megan O'Brien book or anything like that it's not like that kind of erotic (laughs) for the record (laughs) I wonder how O'Brien feels about the fact that you know everybody uses her as a, as a, a heat gauge I hope she feels good about it because like she is the queen of that sector. I do think it's a shame that her her romances don't necessarily sell as well even though they're really really good. Like I don't think Battle Scars sold nearly as well and that's a great book. We've gone down a rabbit hole. Um, And then I'm going to tack on one other. It's not a horror But it doesn't feel right to do a list for Halloween and not mention the fact that Andy Marquette did a book called, I think it's called The Secret of Sleepy Hollow, which is like a rewrite of the Sleepy Hollow story. It's not scary, but it is great. So. Absolutely. That should absolutely be on any kind of Halloween list. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the perfect Halloween read, right? It it totally is. And it's it's cute. I, I recommend it. You can read my review up on the site. So links to all of these... The books we've discussed today will be in the show notes, as well as synopsis for them. And I think that's it, Tara. I think we're done. Are we done? We are done. Well done, us. You want to take it away? Yay. You want to finish off since you you commandeered my podcast? Oh, my goodness. All right. Yes, I do. Thank you, Sheena, for letting me commandeer your podcast and taking over. This was a lot of fun getting to interview you. Um, so that is all for this episode. Thank you, Sheena, for joining me on your own show. (laughs) Uh, so again, I'm Tara. You can listen to me on my show as well. Let's do books. That's on the podcast channel. Um, you can email me at Tara at the lesbian view.com with your questions or comments. If you have enjoyed this episode, please Like Sheena said, check out the show notes. You're also going to find a Patreon link there for the Lesbian Talk Show. And when you become a Patreon, you get content that no one else does, like some super kick-ass bonus audio shows. You also might get the occasional super cool swag, so I think you should consider signing up for it. Don't forget, you can also join us and all the other podcasters from the Lesbian Talk Show on the Lesbian Talk Show chat group on Facebook. To find this and many other great shows, just look for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher. Awesome. That was fun. Thanks, Tara. Ta-da! Yay! When you said this is the story of Gabe and Anna, I thought you said Gabe Gabe and Anna. Anna. (laughs) And this was like, what? What? Yeah. What? Does, does, Does Gabe maybe have a weird last name? And I started to look it up and I realized you were talking about two people. And not a gay banana. Or... That actually, it's funny because that happened to Mole a lot with her wife when she was writing the book. She said to her wife one day in the car, she turned over to her and said to her, what do you think of gay banana? So she's like, what's a gay banana? (laughs) Well, I'm glad it wasn't just me. (laughs) Uh, 
But you see, I say so. What did I, I say? Banana. So it would be gay banana, which is different. Oh, um, see, all these years I've known you, and I'm still learning things <laughs> like how you pronounce banana. <laughs> <laughs>